Hi, I'm Una Kenti, and today I want to talk to you about this delightful little board game called Thieves Market. Now, in it, you are playing a bunch of ne'er-do-wells who have just come back from a job, nondescript, but almost certainly illegal, and you have a lot of loot to divide up. You'll be doing that dividing through the central mechanic, which I think is absolutely fantastic. You're picking up a bunch of dice and rolling them. And this is the pool of loot that you have to divide up. Now, I'll be using my best imaginary friends, Mike and Andrew, to help demonstrate this. Now, in the central pool, you have all of this loot. You have uh, tasty victory points, which you'll be needing to win the game. Uh, gold, which you can use as uh, wild cards to purchase cards. And the gems themselves, which you will need to purchase things. These are places, characters, items that form your criminal empire, I suppose. And you have a variety and they all have a cost and they let you manipulate things, change gems into other things, earn money, earn victory points, uh, and so on and so forth. Now you might eye this up and think, I've got a card that I really want to buy and I want to earn some gold and victory points. So you'll go out all out and you'll pick a selection and probably the first player marker as well because that lets you buy first. Mike over here might have some idea of, of what he wants. He's content to, to buy, buy something for himself. Then Andrew over here uh, looks at what's available. He can take what is remaining in the centre, uh, but that might not let him actually buy anything. There might not be cards available at a particular tier that he wants or needs. So he might start hungrily eyeing up what I have. But greed does have consequences. If he steals from me, which he is perfectly entitled to do, rather than picking from the centre, uh, he has to pick one of the dice and roll them back into the centre. So he might say, well, the gold, not so much, roll into the centre. And so the dilemma continues. Now I have nothing and all the loot must be divided up, everyone must have something, uh, and I must choose again. I might look at the centre and say, well, that still doesn't really allow me to do anything. And I might look back at Andrew, who just stole from me and say, well, I'm just going to steal back. But as I do, I, of course, have to give something back. Now the central heap might start looking a little bit tempting. He might have some options there and uh, still be able to make do with it. And also the prospect of stealing from me uh, or even from Mike might not be appealing because he's got to give one of the gems, one of the dice back and re-roll it. So he might settle eventually for taking a lot of dice, which some of them might be useless. So every turn you're rolling, you're uh, divvying up the loot, uh, someone takes uh, a larger share and there's a lot of thinking to go on. Can you make do with just a little bit so that you can buy some of the cards that you wanted? Things which let you turn uh, particular gems into gold, straight up victory points in lots of different combinations, uh, and sometimes, again, just turning uh, your gems straight into victory points. There can be a lot to think about in, a, in some cases, but I think that it's only until the latter end of the game when you get a lot of cards out, you've got a lot of options open to you, and you're trying to build up more of that machine where it could get a little bit slower. But really, everything still revolves around that tension. And I think it's brilliant. Or at least I did until I went on holiday to Normandy. The holiday was absolutely delightful, thank you very much. But I did crack this out for uh, a bunch of people. It absolutely bombed. One of the players, for example, took a really long time deciding what to do each turn. They were clearly thinking about all of the cards that they could be buying. They were thinking of all of the gems that they could be taking and either stealing or from the central reservation. And they were thinking about all of the options that were available to them. What was the next step? What could they do? What was the most efficient way? One of the other players uh, didn't engage with the central mechanic at all. The thing that I consider to be the best thing about the game, they basically did not touch. On every round, apart from the penultimate one, they did not steal from any other player. They just took what they were given, 
they took the dice that were left in the central reservation, uh, or they picked just a few, so as not to make themselves a tempting target for someone to steal from. But they always got just enough to be able to buy some cards and build up their machine. And the last player in that game uh, had a little bit of difficulty with some of the cards and uh, what they do, and generally how the whole thing functions. Even though I thought that it was universal and it was the best short game for three to five players, maybe I was wrong. Huh. <coughs> Nevertheless, whatever the force of the game, I still really, really like it. And I think there is an awful lot to love. First of all, the artwork on all of these cards is, is absolutely delightful and fantastic. It's, it's cheery, it's got uh, little jokes, it's got just uh, amusing compositions, uh, it's, got, it's got Gaston. It's got a card just for the purpose of recording your victory. Uh, if you win a game of Thieves Market, the recommendation is that you hold one of these up and take a selfie. And post it on social media to let everyone know that you are the king of thieves. And you have these uh, little reference cards which uh, everyone gets to tell them uh, what's going on in the game. And this is just great, like the entirety of the rules, everything that you should be doing on this one two-sided card. And that's rare. And altogether, the central mechanic, the delightful art, uh, the good references, the relatively short playtime, um, I think it's marvellous. I'm still genuinely in love with the game. I, I love breaking it out and, and having fun with it. And I think that you should have this game. Thank you very much for watching this thing. I have been Inakenti and I'll see you around.